in now. Uh, Benham Ben Teli Blue, who is a former. Uh, uh, Iran, he's an Iranian expert and also uh, someone who has testified in Congress about Iran's capabilities. Also, former Under Secretary of Defense, Secretary Robert Wilkie. Gentlemen, a pleasure to have both Welcome. of you. As we get more information in, I'd like to just um, put out a couple of new uh, details that the IDF moments ago released. He, uh, Daniel Hagari, IDF spokesperson, I believe he's a gentleman who was just at the podium, says the incident is not over. He says Iran launched more than 200 projectiles at Israel. Uh, we know one of them uh, injured a young girl. Uh, slight damage to infrastructure at a military base. Fighter jets were able to down dozens of cruise missiles, dozens of drones. Mm. Um, if I can, Benham, first to you, uh, what do you read from sort of the numbers that we're getting from the IDF? And do you think this is over for this wave this evening? Well, thank you for having me back again. It honestly remains to be seen. The Iranians could be trying to lull the Israelis in with a false sense of security, uh, or more aptly could be signaling that, you know, one type of attack is over, another wave may come. But I will say this, the Iranians have stressed and their uh, state media has at least confirmed that ballistic missiles were launched as well. These things fly high and fast compared to the suicide drones, which if you had to ask me, the bulk of what may have been intercepted may likely have been suicide drones. And I see on the bottom of the screen there in the past, you did have the note saying that Jordanian jets as well mm -hmm. uh, had aided in the detecting and downing yeah. of these jets, which is an important regional component yeah. to stress here on the pushback against Iran. Sure is. No, yeah. no. Secretary Wilkie, let's get your insights. You and I just spoke last night, in fact, on N2, uh, and we were both agreeing that perhaps Iran, after many days of warnings, that maybe their bark was bigger than their bite. Mm -hmm. uh, but now there's been a bite tonight. Uh, what's your sense about them not using proxy? doing the dirty work themselves, as you heard a moment ago, but also Jonathan Conrique is suggesting, even though it appears most of these missiles have been intercepted and shot down, that Israel will, is still likely to prepare a dramatic response. What kind of response are you expecting, sir? Well, let me just say, if I think, uh, knowing Mr. Netanyahu and his cabinet, if an Israeli is killed, and I think the response will be swift, and I think the response will be uh, very harsh. Um, what has surprised me, and, and Mr. Conricus a few minutes ago said it, uh, we've all expected the Iranians to be very strategic in their approach to this. They know that uh, Israel can uh, have escalation dominance at a moment's notice over them. Um, the Israelis can overwhelm uh, Iranian defenses very quickly. And this is a risk that I'm actually shocked that they they took in this form, and now yeah. they're they're putting their hands up. But I do think that the response will come, and and knowing the Israelis, it could come in the form of Israeli cyber uh, warriors taking down the entire Iranian electric grid or destroying mm -hmm. through computers uh, the Iranian nuclear um, uh, energy program, nuclear weapons program. Yeah. Uh, or it can be kinetic with ballistic missiles or missiles coming off of submarines. Again, we don't know uh, what the lasting effects of this night will be, and we don't know if it's over yet. You know, ben, I'm, uh picking up on some of the things Secretary Wilkie just said, I mean, nuclear uh, is something that's a huge concern. Uh, Conricus just said a few minutes ago that he thinks the calculus was Iran started buying their own propaganda. Mm. Uh, what do you think the calculus was to go in there if they know the stakes are this high and the ability for not just the U.S., U.K., but even Jordan right there in, in the backyard mm -hmm. to be, be willing to push back as well? I think there are several factors here. Perhaps the most important one is one I, I fleshed out in the Wall Street Journal until about, a, about a month ago, that Iran has increasingly been using ballistic missiles in military operations and increasingly been publicly using these missiles in military operations. Mm -hmm. It hasn't done away with the proxy network. What it's trying to do, and this is still a very crude attempt, is to layer on overt conventional force onto a state, onto a regime which has mastered asymmetric and covert military activity. So this was quite crude, yes, but if you count since 2017, there have been 11 such public ballistic missile operations from Iranian territory. What makes this one so historic is one, the first time they ever attempted to strike Israel, two, the first time they attempted to strike Israel from their country with a missile that would be targeting a defended asset. Everything else that the regime has struck with its own missiles and drones in the past was undefended. And that mm. explains the high rate of success here and the Iranians, in essence, practicing uh, on this. Yeah.
Absolutely. Great points yeah. indeed. Secretary Wilkie, on a night like this, we want to stick with the facts. We want to give our viewers as much information as possible from experts like yourself. Uh, and as I heard some of our other experts, like Jonathan Conricus, saying uh, that he thinks the whole paradigm has shifted, that this is day one of a new Mideast with the Israel and other allies determined to stop Iran because they've really overstepped here. Uh, but also, I don't want to forget that Fred Flights a few moments ago, former CIA an analyst, was telling us that he has sources telling him that there are concerns tonight that Iran could have been testing Israel's air defenses for the possible use down the road of a nuclear weapon or weapons. Uh, how do you make sense of some well, of that information? Absolutely. Um, that th this could be a dry run. It, it, it's, a, it's an ancient uh, military concept that you, you send in what uh, the British would call the forlorn hope uh, to see uh, where the enemy is weak and where the enemy is strong. So this is, this is something that's not new to warfare. But I'm going to go back to the first part of your question. Uh, had there been a second uh, Trump administration, the correlation of forces that you talked about would have been very much in evidence. The Abraham Accords were working. Uh, the Saudis were uh, working with the United States and Israel because, look, the Sunni Arabs are a heck of a lot more worried about Shia in Mecca than they are Jews in Jerusalem. And because of this administration reviving the Obama-Biden administration's policy of appeasing the Ayatollahs. This is where we have come to as a result of that, from maximum pressure by Donald Trump to as, as recently as September, uh, Biden, Blinken, and Sullivan handing the Ayatollahs $10 billion more yeah. on top of the tens of billions of dollars they've given them since January 20th, 2021. So I agree, the forces are coming together, um, but it's sad that it has had to come to this yeah. uh, before those things happen. Gentlemen, we appreciate your insights. Thanks for coming in on a busy night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both.